There yet? There we are. All good. Let's get going. Excitement. Daremoga, Ichido a Kamisama ni nota koto ga arito mo. Tato e nani mo shinji te inakte mo, masugu na kokoro de, inori o sasageru hi ga, itsuka kanarazu yatte kuru.誰もが探しているもの。誰もが求めているもの。手を伸ばし、掴み取ろうとするそれは。巡る思いと人々の絆が作り出す。その先にあるそれは。<笑> The wooden doors groaned as they reluctantly gave way. An icy atmosphere greeted me as I entered the chamber. Hey Petries! How's it going? How were your courses? Hope everything went well. As I gazed at the altar ahead of me, a translucent cloud of white escaped my lips. This was a place I was accustomed to seeing. However, what I saw was the impossible. I was losing it. Had my mind weakened to the point where I had begun to hallucinate? Hey, oddly manifested. How's it going? Ara? The girl standing in front of the altar looked over her shoulder toward me. Konbanwa. She smiled an impartial smile and nodded in my direction. Her long black locks gingerly whipped behind her back. Oh. For some reason, my heart began to ache. The voice of this young woman was a voice I had heard countless times. Each of her words echoed softly in my ears. Yo. Yo. Oh, it's okay, Beatriz. Don't worry about it. It's, it's uh, no problem at all. Let's see. There you are. <laughs> Your recognition honors me. Problem fixed. <laughs> okay. I could barely force that single syllable out of my mouth. Never in my wildest dreams had I imagined ever speaking to her again. <laughs> my heart is swelling in all kinds of ways. Oh, I love this character so much. <laughs> Oh, she was really here. That gentle smile was exactly as I remembered it. Everything about this moment seemed so unreal, but I couldn't help but feel wretched. Merry Christmas! This was no time to be exchanging festive greetings. There were things that needed to be said. Christmas なのにお一人なんですか ああ、ここ何年もずっと一人身のクリスマスを過ごしてきたよ。あら、お寂しいですね。とか言ってる私も実は一人だったりするんですけどね。だったらよかったら少しでいいから話し相手になってもらえるかな。ええ、喜んで
Oh, nice. That sounds great. <laughs> it's a good start. I believe in you. You got this. And yeah, I know. It's uh, it's weird uh, to keep going about your day and be doing your regular things while, you know, knowing that things out in the world aren't that alright. But at the same time, there really isn't much else you can do other than just be you and keep doing your things. So, yeah, it's okay. The girl's smile suddenly became more intimate. Ah, oh, her voice. Yeah, you have, you fucker. <laughs> I didn't care if this was a dream. All that mattered was that she was here. I had made her wait for far too long. Himura Himura Yukun Desione. She looked at me questioningly. No, she couldn't have. Ore no koto wasrete da no ka? Eh, jitsu wa. An innocent giggle escaped her lips. Had she forgotten, or was she just toying with me? Tataima. For an instant, I felt as though my memory was being thrown back. Images of that faraway sunset surged into my mind. Ah, so that. Indeed, it was summertime. Back then, I had forgotten about Yuko. Back then, I knew nothing about her. Our summer, a time we could never return to. I left the library after finishing my work. Si silence filled the hallway. Not a person could be seen. There were supposed to be students doing club activities. Out of all days, why was the day the quiet one? Oh, you're Beatrice's friend. That's so nice. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's very kind. But I don't know how amazing I am. I'm just, I'm just me. So yeah, you're more more than welcome to to hang out, and hopefully, uh, you guys are gonna enjoy the new visual novel. Uh, I'm also a little bit confused. Is there supposed to be silence and like no background music? Give me, give me a second. Uh, configuration BGM is not muted. I lowered it, but definitely not did not mute it, right? So I didn't mess it up. It's it's how it's supposed to be, right? I don't see anything else about it, so I will assume for the moment that this is how it's supposed to be. Okay, hopefully that's that's not wrong. <sighs> My own footsteps were fiercely audible. Sunlight flooded the hallway. Though it was evening, the hot rays wouldn't let up. I had only walked a bit, but my body was already sweating. I changed into my outdoor shoes and went outside. Without even the slightest hint of a breeze, the air around me felt hot, humid, and nauseating. It was unquestionably summer, all right. I couldn't say that I hated summer. Compared to the melancholy of winter, I had little reason to complain about this vibrant season. It wasn't something to hate. Come to think of it, that was how I sorted everything in life. Things I hate, and things I don't hate. What a healthy way of seeing the world. <laughs> or was it? I lifted my eyes to the smoldering sky. 
the way I wanted to live was... Wait. Doesn't he say his own lines? What the? A simple white object twirled and fluttered in the air. There it is. It was a pepper airplane. Where'd this stupid thing come from? Is it like a Tomoya thing? I have to read his lines too? That's weird. The plane landed neatly at my feet. I kneeled and inspected the handmade aircraft. Even at our age, there were students foolish enough to make something so pointless. As I reflected upon the grounded annoyance, my eyes uh, flitted from one window to the next. The culprit may have already fled the scene. Ah. My eyes were suddenly fixated on a solitary girl. She was swinging her legs over the edge of the roof as if she had not a care in the world. What was she doing up there? More importantly, just then a flood of questions threatened to overtake my brain. Acknowledging my presence, the girl gazed at me from her lofty perch. She looked down, stopped all movement, and smiled at me. I love how they have like uh, eye blinks and mouth movements in this. This is cool, this is new for me. After ascending the stairs, a breathtaking panorama revealed itself as I opened the rooftop door. From this vantage point, it seemed as though the golden sun was preparing to incinerate the earth. Amid the searing red light was the lone girl in a serene posture. Why are you wearing your winter uniform? I asked her a question, but it wasn't my intention to scold her. What I had originally planned to say somehow left me. The scene before my eyes took my breath away. This was my first time setting foot on the rooftop, so I was surprised that there was no fence or railing to be found. Fuyufuku? The girl raised an eyebrow. So the sound works. <laughs> it's not that the sound doesn't work, it's just... That's how it is. Isn't that a winter uniform? Or maybe you didn't know about the uniform change? What? She was clearly wearing Ottawa Collegiate's des designated winter uniform. The fact that she had apparently made a point of donning gloves made that uh, made what she said even more bizarre. Uh, not quite. <laughs> she made no logical sense. <laughs> Naturally, who wouldn't after seeing that? Wearing such warm clothes in the middle of summer could only be considered a form of masochism. <laughs> As she spoke, her hand caressed her sleeve. There should be music. Maybe not in these scenes, though. Okay, we'll see. I tested it, like, in, in the settings there's a test button, so I'm pretty sure the setting for the music is not too low, but yeah, uh, we'll see. This isn't an interrogation. Her voice was trailing off, so I decided to cut the conversation short. Perhaps she had scars from a childhood injury. He's very perceptive. Girls her age wouldn't like to show their scars to anyone. I understood that much. Besides, her winter clothes suited her to a curious degree. Of course, that thought would have to be kept to myself. As if. I shook my head as I recalled my original intent. You know, you're not supposed to be up here. The door was usually locked, so I had no idea how she managed to get a hold of the key. <laughs> Great, she was pouting at me. I came to warn you, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't change the subject like that. <laughs> she didn't seem interested in explaining how it was shameful. Just be glad I'm not a teacher. How did you get up here anyway? Accessing the rooftop of Ottawa Collegiate was forbidden. 
It was natural for most students to forget that there was even a way. As a result, the area was virtually untouched. <laughs> if you're going to lie, at least come up with a more believable story. You can't see anything at this time of day. Besides, do we even have an astronomy club? I didn't see a telescope or anything of the sort. Dissolved? Just the first year, huh? I had the impression that this girl was much younger than me. Three or four years younger, in fact. <laughs> I uttered those words with total indifference. All this small talk had become so common in my life that I mostly acknowledged things like a drone. Doing so had its pros and cons. So どうにもならないんです。でも、どうも私が関わったところは大抵ろくでもない末路を迎えるんですよね。What <laughs> spoke that unsettling declaration without the slightest hesitation. Come to think of it, this wasn't something to admit to a random passerby. Whatever, I just came to warn you. Don't sit in such a dangerous place. <laughs> the girl chuckled. Something about the way she did it grated my nerves. I don't really care about what you're doing or how you even got up here. Still, I'd feel guilty if you were to suddenly slip off and kill yourself. Did she actually not understand? I don't want to see anyone die, isn't that obvious? She sounded a bit aggravated. Maybe she realized that I thought of her as reckless. My intuition was most likely correct in this case. Then she seemed to relax a little. Himura Yu Senpai? <laughs> she leisurely called out my name. Exactly who are you? She was a fellow student, so it wasn't strange that she knew my name. However, I recognized her voice. This eccentric manner of speaking along with her warm smile were somehow familiar, but I couldn't fathom how I knew. Answer the question. She slightly scolded me and shook her head. Why was I so irritated? Some part of me was being drawn to her, yet I felt like I was suffocating. The girl smiled once more. What is that A at the bottom? I have no idea. Yuko? ええ。お願いですから。忘れたなんて言わないでくださいね。ゆうこ。私は一目で分かったのに、あなたはすっかり忘れてたら、もう悲しくて立ち直れないですよ。もしも。If you truly have forgotten, speak no more until you have remembered. Yuko's gaze crossed the empty space between us. Her smile had not changed in the slightest in that, since that time. あの夏も屋上での再会も何もかもが遠くなってしまいましたけど。遠いな。
なんだかお年寄りみたいな発言ですね<笑>お互いにな We both shot each other a wry smile. Yes, she had changed since back then. And yet, that only augmented my feelings. あなたは少し変わりましたね。変わるさ。それなりに時間は流れたんだよ。そうですね。私たちが過ごしたあの時間にはもう手が届かない。思い出も記憶も何もかも過ぎ去っていくそれが当たり前のことだ当たり前のことだけどそれが悲しい悲しいことはたくさんあったなでも Life doesn't flow backwards Grief, loneliness, emotions gradually accumulate And slowly disappear. I came to this realization as I myself rode the transience of time. Yuko probably did as well. いや。お前は最初からいい笑顔を持ってたのさ。ちょっとそのことを忘れてただけだ。Summer ended and made way for the coming of autumn. Before we knew it, winter had arrived as well. It was a cold, harsh winter. Though our old scars still hurt a little, Yuko and I were able to sincerely look at each other in the eye. Ah. I was satisfied with just seeing her smiling face. It felt as though I didn't need anything else. That smile was more important than anything. I once believed I could stay by her and her smiling face forever. Yuko made her suggestion as she plopped herself down beside me. Huh? You're still awake? I looked up from my notebook. The clock informed me that the date had already changed. If only I had this kind of concentration while drawing. Great, I may as well give up for the time being. I grimaced at the sight of her cheeriness and closed my notebook. My body was still aching, so I figured it was about time to stop. Okay. Actually, on second thought, I'm going to bed. If I stay up, you'll probably stay awake too. <laughs> She's so cute. I love her clothes. And I love that color. It's like, oh my god, such a cute design. Of course, don't wear yourself out. Yeah, <laughs> Why must you answer me in such a deliberately annoying fashion? Ah, fine, I get it. Talk about an affable personality. I made sure Yuko was in her own futon as I lay myself down. It may have been that chilly, but it otherwise felt great. All the tension in my body gradually slipped away. I must have been more tired than I thought. I closed my eyes and nearly passed out on the spot. Yuko? Yes? Hello? What is it? 
実はお願いがありまして What's wrong? えー、っとそっちへ行ってもいいですか<笑> ?What? <笑> I couldn't believe it. However, I didn't think I misheard. Well, it's fine by me, but I answered a bit hastily. I don't know what you're planning, but maybe it's better to avoid that for now. Besides, I'm tired. <laughs> a confused voice traveled through the darkness. <laughs> don't be so ambiguous then. <laughs> I'm not mad. I could feel the blood rushing to my cheeks as I turned my back to her. <laughs> Enough already, just be quiet and sleep. <laughs> Do whatever you want. I straightened my back so that Yuko would be looking right at my spine. That was a terrible mistake. <laughs> I felt my sheets move. Yuko had slid herself beside me. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the freaking laugh? <laughs> Yuko nestled up perfectly against my back. I felt something soft pressing against it. Why are you apologizing? I know. With those words, my heart started to beat at a slightly less frantic pace. If it was for her sake, I would try to keep my emotions from getting the better of me. Yuko. I rolled myself over to face her and wrapped my arms snugly around her. <gasps> Aww. It's better to be warm, right? Hi. I could hear the glee in Yuko's voice. Are you comfortable? Or does this feel awkward? <laughs> does it though? I think uh, the Steam one is PG. I, I, I think. I'm not 100%. Uh, but yeah, I mean... <laughs> I know the characters do have that kind of interaction with each other. It's normal, okay? She pressed herself closer against me. It would hurt after a while. It's cramped in here. We had this conversation when we planned to buy a futon. Though we lived together, the thought of using only one futon made me feel uneasy. If we slept in the same one, it would have been impossible to suppress our carnal instincts. <laughs> we would have done it every night. But it's nice every once in a while. Did you tell her tonight? <laughs> well, come on, they eventually did uh, did do that, and yeah, it was a bit of a progression to then, but you can't fault them, that's alright. Also, Nagisa really, um, like, triumphantly um, <laughs> announced the last stream. <laughs> When we were reading Ushio's story, that they're still doing it and, um, yeah, being very happy about it, so, yeah. They're fine. They're doing just fine. Could you please not talk like that? This is embarrassing. Then don't say it. No, say it. I suddenly felt the warmth of Yuko's lips on my own. Aww. You are such an idiot sometimes. I stole a kiss of uh, my own and tightened my embrace. From that night onward, we always slept in the same futon. Our bodies were pressed against one another, our fingers firmly intertwined. 
Neither of us would let go until we both greeted the morning sun. There was nothing more important to us than each other. Hey, not easy to win. How's it going? Welcome. We fought from time to time, but that wasn't surprising. Show me a couple that doesn't. Each step of life would be taken together. That was what we thought. Yeah, I'm all good. Just started the visual novel tonight, I'm excited. And yeah, happy to be sharing it with you. <sighs> with you guys, I mean, with everybody who's in chat. <laughs> hey, Clinton, how's it going? <laughs> uh... I couldn't say that it had only been a short time since we enjoyed those peaceful days. It wouldn't have been strange if one of us had completely forgotten about the other. My memory was dim. I wondered if it was because I had lost so much. It was on the morning of Christmas Day, so many years ago. Fuck, <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Just, just. Okay. Mm. It's not time yet for that, okay? The, the waterworks will come, okay? But later on. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, happy to have you around. That is to win. I remembered her nodding as we made the promise. It was imperative to run as fast as I could to the church where she had been waiting. I never forgot the events that occurred on that day. Nor did I ever forget the pain of leaving our promise unfulfilled. <laughs> Yugo shook her head innumerable times. Then I understood. She had forgiven me. However, the pain in my heart wouldn't leave me just yet. それに Yuko had been waiting for me, even now. Indeed, it was no coincidence that I knew this. You haven't finished, Tef. That's alright. I had no, like, uh, requirements. <laughs> it's not like there is a bar <laughs> that you have to fulfill, otherwise I'm upset at you or something. It's fine. I, if I am to say that, I, I haven't finished it either. I just started it, so. I just watched the anime a couple of times. Uh, many, many years ago. Around the, kind of the same time that I watched Clanet, I believe. It was kind of around the same period in my life. I don't remember which one came first, though. May have been this one first. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so, indeed, it was no coincidence that I knew this. そうかもしれませんね。教えてくれ。お前に何があったのか。She glanced at the large wooden doors as she searched for a suitable answer. Of course, I understood. It wasn't something that could be summed up in a few short sentences. やっぱり
<laughs> so there was another worthless man elsewhere in the city. <laughs> oh, that's kind of mean to assume that he's worthless. <laughs> so he was looking for a woman who was ほんの少しだけその男の子の物語に関わってみようって聞かせてくれないかそいつの物語を長くなりますけどいいさヨガを吹けるまでにはまだ時間があるでは語りましょうか彼がこの教会を訪れたところから始まった冬の物語を。So pretty. Right, so one year ago. I, Hiro Hirono, made my way through the frigid night. As a deliberate, uneasy silence aggravated my ears, the cold penetrated my shoes, causing my entire body to tremble. When I looked above the glowing streets and into the sky, I was unable to see any stars. Only the faded likeness of the moon gleamed through the clouds. C cold. My visible sight melted into the darkness. I curled my shoulders and quickened my pace. The low temperature was to be expected at this time of year. However, I thought it would be nice if I didn't see a single snowflake that night. The possibility of a white Christmas didn't appeal to me. Snow is nothing more than a natural phenomenon, after all. I couldn't consider its timing to be even the least bit significant. A girl stood beyond the majestic doors. Ara? The girl who stood before the altar turned around and smiled. Although she appeared to be a petite lady- oh my god, the song. <laughs> my heart, okay. Although she appeared to be a petite lady, I estimated that she was only a year or two younger than me. ざんねんですけどクリスマスのミサはもうお開きになりましたよ参加したいならまた来年お越しになってくださいね Oh, I'm not really into that ではどうして? ここの教会では炊き出しはやってませんよ What are you, blind? If she mistook you for a homeless bum, <laughs> I certainly didn't look the part I was only wondering what a church would look like during this time of year. Is it a crime for me to walk in? Well, straying from the norm has pretty much been part of my career. The girl raised an eyebrow. She might have mistaken me for a vagrant, but I didn't exactly present myself as an upstanding member of society. She would naturally question whatever I said. Forget about it. Anyway, it sure is quiet in here. Okay. By the way, what's up with you? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Her smile wrapped into a twisted, almost sarcastic expression. That's not what I'm asking about. 
そんな顔されると怖いですよ<笑> Man, I love her Oh, I missed her The girl had an overt disposition It wasn't excessive, but it didn't appear that she was afraid of me at all 私は雨宮優子雨にお宮参りの宮それに優しい子って書きます Oh, gentle child, that's cute ちなみにただの通りすがりさんです Your getup makes you look like a nun. Don't you work here? こういうファッションなだけですよ。業界の関係者でも何でもありません。Gee, thanks. At least you're being honest. <laughs> いえいえ、どういたしまして。<laughs> Wait, Yuko Amamiya? Something didn't feel right. Yuko Amamiya. I knew I had heard that name before, but how? どうかしました Nothing. I shook my head. I didn't recognize her face, so I was probably hallucinating. もしかして、一目惚れですか<laughs> I've never seen a nun dress like that. Yeah, it's not necessarily nun like, you know. But, yeah, what do I know? それもやむを得ないと思いますが、私はできれば、お友達からがいいんですけど。<laughs> You're trying to provoke me. <laughs> She maintained the banter as though it was all a game. I shot a glare at her. She lowered her head, pretending to look away. I hate to admit it, but I'm of an awfully serious person. You don't need to know. Why would a passerby like me need to be called by name? それはずるいですよ。私はちゃんと名前言ったのに。Her politeness turned sour rather quickly. <laughs> you told me your name on your own. いいじゃないですか、名前くらい。減るもんじゃないでしょうに。When she said that, I felt the urge to become defiant. あ、ついにだんまりモードですか。<laughs> Oh, sorry. もういいです。私だって特に知りたいわけじゃありませんもん。あなたの名前を知ったところで一問の得にもなりませんしね。ヒロ、ヒロヒロの。<sighs> She stared at me for a moment. ひねくれもの。Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> She suddenly started to giggle. Something funny? Yes, She shook her head as she stopped giggling. Hiro no Hiro san desu ka? Um, いいお名前ですね It sounds better when you put the family name first, but in the translation it's the other way around. And it's also confusing me. <laughs> ah, am I supposed to be flattered? It's not like I chose it or anything. Someone gave it to me. Huh, I wouldn't care if you did. Why was I continuing this worthless conversation? On top of that, I was continuing it in a church with some stranger. By being alone in here, I think that you'd be mispeculiar yourself. Come on, what's your excuse? So ね、For a few seconds, the church fell into silence. The light from the candles on the walls made her silhouette float among the shadows. Her eyes swam around the room as her face was quickly overcome with concern. After a brief moment, her tense expression faded and her smile returned. Her smile was different than the one that had made a fool of me several moments prior. Who is this person? You're kidding, right? <laughs> She was probably toying with me again. Yeah, right. As if there could be any doubt. Her inscrutable nature was beginning to get on my nerves. 
you don't know who, but you still want to wait for this person? Eh. And the two of you were supposed to meet in this church? Pabu. You suppose? What time? She shook her head slightly. If she was unsure, there wasn't much I could have done. Perhaps it was a promise from when she was a child. Holding on to it seemed impractical. That sounds rather vague. Do you seriously think you can meet this person? She nodded with confidence. She wanted me to agree in the face of such improbable odds. Can't you dream anytime? Iye, Christmas wa tokubitsu desu yo. Forgiven? How so? <laughs> Instead of answering, she formed a jovial smile and giggled. This was beyond comprehension. Her mind was absolutely impossible to figure out. Since there was no need to understand her, I decided to abandon any, abandon any attempt to do so. Hope you'll actually meet this person. Good luck. あなたは? Me. あなたはクリスマスを一緒に過ごしたい人はいないんですか I wouldn't go as far as admitting that I prefer being alone. Still, I was certain that I wouldn't want to be with someone else. It wasn't that I enjoyed being a lonely or anything. I simply had no desire to stay in one place and settle down with someone. That was the only reason I was here. There was no special meaning to it. I'm not like you. I slowly turned around. Home. Why should I stay? It's freezing in here. I'd rather not waste my free time. Goodbye. <laughs> That's a, a, a rather abrupt. We would likely never see each other again. As I started to walk away, her voice beckoned from behind. Yeah? And what's that? Yuko Amamiya said her final words to me with a sly grin. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yuki de mo hura nai ka na? Ufto, so na koto o kangaeru. Yuki no hitotsu mo hureba. Already we see the juxtaposition with uh, Hiro being like, eh, I'd rather it didn't snow. I don't like snow, it's a hassle. <laughs> and Miyako's like, aww, why wouldn't it snow? It would be so special. So cool. ひとりで雪なんて眺めたって、ロマンも何もないけれど。街を歩いている人たちは、みんな幸せそうだったな。みんなが<笑> Jibun 
気がつけばこんなところにいる一っ子一人いやしない、はあ、自販機で買ったばかりの熱い缶コーヒーを飲んで一息つくミルクと砂糖がたっぷり入ったコーヒーは甘くて熱くて最高に美味しい美味しいけどどこか虚しいそろそろ帰ろうかな腕時計に目をやるこの辺りは別に物騒じゃないけどさすがに女の子が一人歩きしていい時間じゃない、はあ、何のために出てきたんだろう私はため息をついてからコーヒーを一気に飲み干し近くにあったゴミ箱に放り込むよし帰ろう遠くから低いエンジン音が近づいてくるゲンチャリかなこんな冷え込む日にバイクに乗るなんて根性入ってるね少しずつバイクのライトが近づいてくるえ何かまっすぐこっちにうまぶしい目を細めたその時だったアウチいきなり肩に衝撃が走ったかと思うと私は地面に転がっていたあいったー何顔を上げるとすでにバイクは数十メートルも先に行ってしまっている。<笑>何よもうバイクに衝突されたわけではなさそうお尻を少し打っただけで他に痛いところもないしって<笑>ない私のバッグ肩から下げていたはずのバッグがどこにもない素早く立ち上がり辺りを見回す街灯の頼りない光に照らされた地面に見慣れたバッグの姿はないもしかしてもしかしなくてもさっきのバイクは泥棒泥棒は、huh? I heard a strange voice as I was about to get on my parked bicycle outside the church. A thief? Was the thief riding the motorcycle that blew past me at a breakneck speed? What a rowdy night this was turning into. A girl from the other side of the street was waving her arms and running my way. As I wondered why she was out this late, I could clearly tell that she was panicking. <laughs> She suddenly approached me. Yeah? I answered in a guarded tone. I did. That way. I pointed in the direction of the motorcycle uh, that the motorcycle had taken. After rattling off that last sentence, the unknown girl straddled my bicycle and disappeared into the darkness of the night. Hey, wait! I didn't know anything about this purse snatcher, but she was a bicycle thief herself! <laughs> I smacked my lips and ran after her. Ouch. <laughs> Ten minutes had passed before I found the miserable figure of my beloved bicycle. The accident must have been spectacular. The handlebars were bent in an awkward fashion. A clicking noise from the suspended tire was a painful invitation for me to break down and weep. Now what? Next to the bicycle was a girl, motionless and sprawled like a snow angel. My first instinct was to inspect my bicycle, but the better half of me had another suggestion. First things first. The bicycle thief lay still on the ground. There didn't seem to be any external wounds, but she was unconscious. If when I didn't want her to die, and if I left her like this, she would freeze to death. Hello, you alive? 
<laughs> no response. Gently shaking her shoulders and flicking her face didn't accomplish anything either. Damn it, maybe she's dead. <laughs> That's a bit of a grim conclusion. I guess I've got no other choice. I took out my cell phone and dialed the non-police emergency number 119. Uh, I've got an injured person. She fell off a bike and she's not moving at all. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is... That's all for now. The call ended and I put my cell phone into my pocket. They better not force me to come with them. Of course, the pressing matter was whether this person was still alive. There was nothing else to do until the ambulance arrived. She was definitely all cold, but I was curious about her breathing. I leaned my ear toward her face. Can't really tell like this. I only noticed her guise after seeing her close up. She seemed somewhat attractive. A page of my sketchbook would be dedicated to her if it were not if it were not for this dire situation. I gave the notion a second thought and realized I had time to kill. One sketch wouldn't hurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I took out my sketchbook and a pencil from my coat pocket. Okay, all set. Perhaps I should get a better look at her face. Ah! <laughs> when I was close enough to count her eyelashes, she suddenly opened her eyes. Oh, I... I did not want to explain this. She blinked two or three times, then sluggishly lifted herself up. I... <laughs> <laughs> You're asking me? I was relieved that she wasn't suspicious of my actions. She looked around, her eyes landing on my battered bicycle. <laughs> then she started to run past me. Wait! I quickly grabbed her arm. <laughs> You think I'm a perv? The issue wasn't even about now or later. She spoke to me in a, a chitting tone. Don't be an idiot, you were unconscious a moment ago. He's long gone, sweetie. I heard you the first time. It's, isn't your life more important than some pervs? Was she actually mulling it over? It's safer for you to stay where you are. Besides, I already called the ambulance, so I'm the one on the limb if you run off. Just a heads up, the second game in the series had sexual content written uh, on its tags. Uh, I remember I've uh, seen the anime scene and none reminded me of it. Okay, you, so you've seen it. It's, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I will look into it, but for now we're good. There's... that's fine. Also, I don't think Steam kind of like publishes super explicit stuff, so... Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll look into it, but for tonight we're fine. I'd ignore people like you if uh, I only thought about my own problems. I called an ambulance because I have a heart. Glad you understand. I spoke with no energy. The situation was wearing me out. She declared her intentions and shook off my arm. He's on a motorcycle. He's absolutely long gone. Like, where are you gonna go find him? <laughs> the girl broke into a sprint before I could react. She really was an idiot. <laughs> the purse snatcher fled on a motorcycle, so he must have been long gone. Shit. Things were taking a turn for the worse. I'd have to explain everything once the paramedics arrived. It's not like I did anything wrong. Why did I have to go through this? 
More importantly, was it okay to just leave her be? Her first attempt at recovering her purse was an absolute failure. Even if she got lucky and found him, she had no chance of reclaiming her belongings. She didn't look like someone who could go mano mano against a man. Uh, sorry, I think that was mano a mano. Sorry. I, I, the sudden shift in, in language. Uh, that confused me. <sighs> At worst, she could be killed. Damn, this is going to be a long night. Oh? My cell phone sang with activity as I was about to give chase. Who could it be? Figures, it's only her. My heart skipped a beat, but I managed to start walking and answer my phone. Yo. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I could hear her just fine without the yelling. Where? It's somewhere. <laughs> Okay, Beatrice, I don't know. We'll see. I didn't forget, you're being stood up. I don't have a dress for the ball at the castle. <laughs> um, that's Cinderella, I was about to say. <laughs> Not good. She was about to erupt and go off on a tangent. Now's not the time. I had to make up an alibi or things would get would turn ugly. How should I say this? I could hear the sound of scampering footsteps not too far behind me. Those are most likely from the paramedics. Look, I'm busy. Till next time. <laughs> I ended the call without another word and put the cell phone into my pocket. Now then, the paramedics would see me if I didn't start running myself. Ah, <laughs> oh, what good ever happened on Christmas Eve? Nothing, absolutely nothing at all. And I still had to confront that girl. Now I'm some puppy you fed? <laughs> She was standing by herself on the sidewalk a few hundred meters from the scene of the accident. I'm not following you, I'm running from the ambulance because I don't want to take the rap. <laughs> Why was I entertaining this girl? <sighs> Why are you so relaxed about? I stood on the deserted beach with the mystery girl. As for why I was in such a situation, earlier she began to wobble in a dangerous fashion. I followed her just for the hell of it and ended up here. Seriously, what was I doing? Poor paramedics, yeah, it feels bad. They devoted resources that could have um, been assigned to someone else who might actually have needed it and they just, uh, you know, they scrammed. They <laughs> didn't at least take responsibility and say, look, uh, I thought the situation was more serious than it actually seems, and yeah, sorry, it's all good, please go about your business, but no. Uh, it's not like I had to chase after her. Didn't you say you were going to catch him no matter what? There was all her- where was all her gusto from before? <laughs> Okay, the sound effects are just, just a little bit, a little bit much here. Let's uh, lower that, thank you. There, um, that's much better. Changed your mind that quickly, huh? I couldn't figure her out at all. She gazed at the dark ocean as though she was deliberately ignoring what had transpired. Yeah. <laughs> Just what do you want to know about me? Hiro Hirono. More or less stopped caring and bluntly answered her question. 
You're one to talk. You have a strange name as well. <laughs> she agreed with herself and nodded repeatedly. The waves quietly collided with the sand in front of us. Next to me was a rather attractive girl. On top of that, it was Christmas Eve. Such a privileged position had never occurred to uh, had never occurred in my entire life. However, my heart was not one of joy. Instead, I was at the peak of exhaustion, both physically and mentally. Well, I uh, that's right. I suddenly remembered. It was because of her that my bicycle was ruined. My bike. What are you going to do about my bike? She looked puzzled. I wasn't surprised at her reaction. The one you swiped and ultimately destroyed. Oh. She slammed her fist into her open palm. Oh is right, because chances are it can't be fixed. So uh, Oh shit. I left it at the scene of the accident. You're the one who crashed it! Uh, yeah, you're right, but you're the last person I want to tell me that. <laughs> she smiled and laughed. However, this was no laughing matter to me. The bicycle wasn't exactly cheap. Hey, I'm, I'm serious. Before I realized that she was peering at my face. It's not that I'm angry. She folded her arms and appeared to be in deep thought. A moment later, she bowed her head. After apologizing, she looked at me with sincere eyes. What was with this sudden change in personality? Oh, you don't have to do that. Her face shone with happiness as she heard my response. The emotions of this girl were wildly unpredictable. You're paying me back, of course. <laughs> she couldn't expect to get away scot-free. Isn't that obvious? Like you said, that's your own problem, isn't it? <laughs> she bent her head and stared at me with upturned eyes. I wasn't naive enough to be tricked by such a cute act. Your future is guaranteed? I'm not saying you have to pay right away. Your contact information is good enough for now. As a Japanese learner, I appreciate how every character of this novel speaks slowly and clearly. Yes, yes, they seem to do that, yeah. You think I do something like that? Even if I was that kind of person, she shouldn't be describing herself as hot. <laughs> I'm actually more afraid of your suspicious nature. Since her cell phone was stolen, I saved her home number into my own cell phone's memory. Okay, I'll be contacting you later. <laughs> no need to act so bitter. Well, I should be heading off. Was she suggesting that I should stay a while? I'm not exactly free at the moment. She was ignoring me. Wait. She had been so calm that I forgot to ask. Are you okay? Physically. Hurt anywhere? Feeling nauseous? Unya. <laughs> I've never heard that. Seriously? She was soundly unconscious at the time. Maybe you haven't noticed anything. Your ass isn't particularly important. 
She was smiling, but was she really okay? I was seriously getting worried. You were knocked out. Even though I barely knew her, it would scar me for life if she suddenly croaked after I left. You were so knocked out. <laughs> Well, yeah, you wouldn't remember that. <laughs> she had a look of sheer disbelief. Duh, you wouldn't have known you were unconscious. Did I have to explain every little detail to her? She was such a different girl in so many ways. How long did I have to stay with her? She smiled under the faint light of the moon. The cool wind that blew from the ocean rocked her hair. As she held her hair down, she uttered something. Arigato. For what? Arigato. Oh. Stop talking like that. I turned my head away. I didn't like being thanked by other people. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> she patted my shoulder as though we had been friends for a long time. Damn it, why did it feel like I had been defeated? What? <laughs> I did not. And she should not be using colorful words words like fun. That was uh to see if you were breathing or not. That was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I said I didn't, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> this conversation was exasperating me beyond endurance. <laughs> <Her face. laughs> hey, could she not think of me as a proper gentleman? You're the second one I've met tonight. Crazy woman number two. I muttered a half-baked response as I recovered myself. Unfortunately. It seemed as though I attracted bizarre girls like some sort of magnet. According to Yuko Amamiya, this was a special night. However, I wouldn't have cared if nothing happened. I wanted my normal quiet night back. Oh, someone sent me a text message. I didn't, it didn't take a genius to deduce the sender. I took out my cell phone and read the display. From K, subject bastard. So you'd rather be a dumb hobo than be at a party. Go fuck yourself. Wow, that's rough. A predictable message from a predictable sender. <laughs> hey, don't look. Before I knew it, Miyako had crept up and read the contents of the text message. Yeah, right. <laughs> I backed up from her and put away my cell phone. <laughs> no, just someone I know. Use your ears for once. That's the same thing. I already told her the truth. What was she implying? Yeah? I don't see how you could interpret that message as a letter of concern. Kei Shindo, the sender of that message, probably hadn't meant what Embrace she said. Your energy. Hey, oddly manifested, thank you for the follow. Nice to have you around. Um, however, it was clear that she was angry. It was best to avoid her for a while. A fuming Kei was uh, scarier than a wounded monster. Then what did you mean? I don't get it. She blushed and formed an almost unnoticeable smile. I assumed she had no other person to be with. Why else would she make such a face? I was a little curious, but... No, it was definitely something I didn't need to know. I decided not to ask about it. 
At times like these, you have to know when to let the other person fire the last shot. She gazed at me in anticipation, then sighed after I refused to take the bait. Yeah. Yeah, you should go to a hospital. Aww. Yeah, no problem. Get a good rest and uh, yeah, thanks for dropping by. Take care. Night night. She quickly dismissed my suggestion and walked away. As I was about to head off in the opposite direction, she stopped. What? Yuki da yo! Yuki! Oh, really? I looked up. Snow was fluttering down from the overcast sky. A delightful smile formed on her face as she took in the spectacle around her. <laughs> she appeared to be genuinely overjoyed. Her carefree laugh filled the air. Then she spun around and danced in the snowfall. <laughs> Not that it matters. Indeed, it, it didn't matter. Snow is nothing more than a, than a natural phenomenon, after all. How could she be ecstatic about it? I didn't feel anything at all. She turned her back to me as she asked for my opinion. Not really. Well, excuse me for being calm and collected. She was comforting herself. However, I kept that thought to myself. If her mind was full of romantic sentiments, then great. I had no reason to dampen her spirits. Yeah? And? Uh oh. This was an omen. That's probably how it'll work out. No, you can't be serious. <laughs> she spun around and beamed with happiness. Christmas Eve was not about to end for me just yet. With that thought in mind, I took one step forward. I could hear a voice in the distance. It was the noise of someone tearing up a storm. The shrill sound of object colliding. Oh, knock it off. Shut up. Just go to hell away. My head felt like it was in pieces. I wondered if my skull had actually cracked. Was that a punch or a kick? Kakatoyo? No wonder. Her skills had improved over time despite the fact that she didn't save... Uh, she didn't have any formal uh, martial arts training. What an ominous face she had. Okita? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mattaku. <laughs> the girl looked down with an expression of disbelief. I rubbed my eyes as I glanced at my alarm clock. What gives? It's only seven. The cold tone of her voice wouldn't get the better of me. I only went to sleep at six. That's your fault, right? 
you know, I'd appreciate it if you thought about this for a minute from my point of view. This oppressive girl's name was Kei Shindo. She was my landlord's granddaughter, a year younger than me. Even though she called me Onichan, we were not related in any way. It might be because we knew each other since we were children. Most men older than herself were addressed properly, but I'd always be Onichan to her. She never once asked what I thought of that nickname. It wasn't her style to ask. However, it set me apart from the rest, so it was fine by me. What a nice number. She was like a little sister to me years ago. Nowadays, we were more like a dog and its master. The details weren't important. Uh, I'll pass. I shook my head. Besides, I'm not that hungry. If I get food poisoning, you'll have I'll have to stay home anyway. <laughs> Kay's eyes uh, harbored a dangerous glint. Uh, forget what I just said. I shook my head once more. Kay's culinary potential could be described as beyond hopeless. She couldn't even peel vegetables correctly. I knew far too well how it felt the day after consuming a meal made by someone who couldn't fry an egg to save her life. Ooh, that feels bad. The worst part about it was that she would never admit that her cooking sucked. <laughs> Where do you find all that confidence? Yes, ma'am. I scratched the back of my head inside. They wouldn't care if I skipped opening day orientation. The deadline's too close, so I'm kind of in a pinch. Pinch, pinch, te. Maitsuki pinch, te. Itte ru janai. Pinch, te. Nani yo? It's reality. Nothing I can do about it. Your recognition oh, squid. honors me. Thirty-three months and then thirty-four months from squid. <laughs> How's it going? Good morning. Ano ne, o ni chan? Wakatte masu ka? お兄ちゃん、出席日数めちゃくちゃやばいのよ。山岳期は解禁賞を狙うくらいじゃないと進級できないのよ。ああ、that's、that's Hope you're much better off than I was this morning. Because <laughs> uh, it took me a while to snap, snap away. Uh. <sighs> I know. Yep, I will do just that after stream. I will plough myself into bed and not get up until tomorrow morning. Hopefully it will be a good night's sleep. Thank you for, for your care. Yeah. I don't think this has anything to do with being weak. On the bright side, I might get lucky and end up in your class. <sighs> Kay ran her fingers through her bangs and heaved another somber, disgusted sigh. Yeah, yeah. Kay was a member of the basketball team. Even though she was a first-year student, she claimed she was already the point guard, whatever that meant. Her petite physique caused her to be quite agile. As a result, she was great at sports. You make it sound like I'm always playing hooky. <laughs> she didn't get it at all. I had responsibilities I couldn't ignore. Maybe I should just drop out. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. K-Stone took a complete 180. She grabbed me by the collar and started to shake me. Shit, she had totally switched gears. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> language, Kay, language. <laughs> she quickly loosened her grip. <clears throat> then she forced a cough from her throat to mask her shame-tinged cheeks. You really need to work on that temper of yours. Well, let's see. Kay had been influenced by many of her older athletic peers. Naturally, her words and actions were every bit as brash as theirs. In addition to that... De <laughs> it takes two to tango. I was only kidding. I wanted to see your reaction. You didn't need to flip out. She began to pout. I know. The fact that she was aware of it was amazing in itself. You're telling me to stay in school even if I get held back? Just what was she trying to say? Fine. Disgruntled, I slowly got to my feet. Mornings seemed to always be like this. This guy's... <laughs> this lucky guy's under a magnet. Yeah, he seems so. <laughs> I let out a huge yawn as I slowly walked towards school. Kate casually issued a warning as she walked beside me. I don't know if I, I'll show up. He shot this sharp glare in my direction. The principal wastes too much of his uh, precious life on those boring speeches. It's pathetic. I'd rather sleep through them. I bet everyone else agrees. About what? It's not that easy. Kangae <laughs> Shindo I told you to stop calling me that. Nagi Shindo. That was my other name. It was best to think of it as a pseudonym. Nagi was my sister's name and Shindo was Kei's last name. Demo Honto yo? It's not really like that though. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> uh, just relax and work on that temper of yours. Really? Would you go through the hassle of hiding my remains? Kay narrowed her eyes and grinned. Eh, <laughs> I quickly clasped my hand over her mouth and looked around. Thankfully, there was no one within earshot. Relieved, I removed my hand. <laughs> As she blushed from ear to ear, Kay wiped her mouth with her sleeve. I was slightly offended that she was acting as though she had come into contact with filth. Me? You promised you wouldn't tell anyone. I wasn't ashamed of being a shoujo manga artist, it's just that the whole world didn't need to know about it. In addition, my editor said it was better if people didn't know that shoujo manga could be authored by men. That's coercion, not a promise. Though I ran the risk of being held back, it would have been inexcusable if I didn't submit my work on time. The wrath of my editor was frightening indeed. Kay had to understand that work was my first priority. I'll think about it. I muttered an insincere response. Mm. Kay nodded in agreement and smiled. She adopted a carefree gait and a lax disposition. 
I didn't want to lie to her, but I wasn't about to sacrifice my career just to see her happy. <laughs> you don't have to go that far. It seemed that Kei was on the verge of hating manga itself. Hey, have you been reading my latest work? Kei scoffed my stupid question. But you're not giving me feedback anymore. Only the bare minimum. It was sad, really. Yes. I see. Seeing her embarrassed would be an improvement. In the past, Kei was absolutely thrilled whenever I drew shoujo manga. Even my unpolished amateur scribbles were showered with her rough compliments. I wondered when exactly she started to criticize my routine. He suddenly clapped her hands. Hmm? What? Christmas! She pointed her index finger at me. Uh, my heart jumped when I heard that word. That was when all sorts of craziness happened around me. We've been over this already. Kay and I didn't see each other during winter break. She was too busy with sports and family commitments. She invited several of her friends to her Christmas party. Then I stood her up. Waiting in vain on Christmas sounds like something out of a novel. <laughs> it was full of girls. How could I go to something like that? Kay gave me the evil eye. I'd love it if we didn't have to argue over something that happened in the previous year. No, my exact words were, I'll come if I come. <laughs> Where in the world did you hear that rule come from? Kay was being a nag at the time, so I gave her an answer to shut her up. I only stood you up. What are you getting so bent out of shape for? What? Do I really have to call her? Mizuki Hayama was a student at Ottawa Collegiate's feeder school. I didn't get many chances to see her. To be honest, I couldn't stand the hyperactive little twit. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Naturally, I had no intention of calling. An airhead like her would have forgotten about it by now. At least, that was what I thought. Within the halls of Ottawa Collegiate existed a professional shoujo manga artist. Three years ago, she received the Best Newcomer Award during a magazine-sponsored manga competition. Two years later, after publishing several standalone pieces in a number of magazines, she began Serial. It was neither overly popular nor unpopular. None of her work was yet available in book form. Upon starting her serial, she left home and lived independently in an apartment belonging to an elderly gentleman named Mr. Shindo. Uh, juggling both her job and school work, work, work was a relentless but necessary task. She continued, uh, continually endured sleepless nights in order to meet deadlines. That woman was me, Hiro Hirono, a student who spent half his days dealing with the trauma that was his job. He's inept at romance, so being a shoujo manga author doesn't suit him, if you ask me. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't read his work, so I can't say. <laughs> also, it might be easier to conjure up situations as an author where you know what's going on in each, each character's mind. Then actually, you know, be the one involved in the situation and have to decipher it yourself. He seems kind of dense to me, in this sense. But that doesn't mean he can't write about it. 
There was time before homeroom and I had the luxury of not having any friends to bother me. If I worked on my drafts during class, my double life would be exposed and I would be ridiculed. ridiculed. At the top of the stairwell, I procured an old key from my pocket. It was time for this woman to do her job. The roof was normally inaccessible to students without permission from one of the staff. I couldn't say that I particularly enjoyed exposing myself to the freezing cold. It was merely a good place for me to work undisturbed. To be honest, this weather could kill me. Yeah, like drawing in that weather, isn't that really bad for like your hands? If your hands are like cold, wouldn't, wouldn't you get hurt? If you like did it for an extended period of time? Well then. Although I was in the middle of inking my current installment, I wouldn't have dared to bring my inking tools to school. Instead, I decided to work on the storyboard for the next installment. Okay, storyboard, yeah, that's, that might work because it's not so detailed. That way, I only needed a pencil and a notebook. If anyone discovered me, my storyboard could easily be concealed. I seated myself on the floor and pulled out my work from my backpack as my uh, portable CD player powered on. Then I put on my headphones and pressed play. The music of my favorite violinist, Shuichi Kuze. Oh. oh! I love this one. Oh man. Oh man, the feelings. Okay. Began to drift into my ears. At times calming, at times passionate, his music was all I needed to muster inspiration. For some reason, my pencil flowed freely whenever I listened to it. Perhaps it was just a placebo. At any rate, Mr. Kuze's music was an integral part of my work. Most of the time the story and panels weren't planned in advance. Until inspiration hit me, anguish was my only companion as I searched my, brains for, my brain for ideas. I closed my eyes and imagined my characters in my head. Their thoughts, their actions. That was my focus. Think. Think. I always felt like I was missing something. The world I saw was missing a color. Which color was lacking, I could not tell, for I could not see it. Restlessness, restlessness gradually gnawed at my heart. That's a given, no? Unfazed by the unexpected voice, I responded as I normally would. I shook my head. I'm foolish. I don't know when to give up. Why are you asking me? Common sense is even better. It's not okay to ask whether or whatever you feel like. <laughs> I'm not a nice person. <laughs> the woman giggled. I'm not sure if I'm actually strong, it's just that... Tada. That dreamers have a duty. To themselves, the dreamers. Hmm? I opened my eyes and saw nothing but the azure sky. Then I shook my head once to confirm that I had returned to reality. This was the roof of my school. There was no doubt about it. Was I asleep? I must have fallen asleep as soon as I started drawing. It seemed that I hadn't gotten any work done. Orientation was likely over already. My portable CD player was idle. As I took out my cell phone to check the time, I felt as though something was amiss. <laughs> I turned my head toward the source of the voice. Hello, standing a few meters, me meters ahead of me. Miyako Miyamura. <laughs> there she is. 
Just like that night on the beach, she was standing before me amid the cold breeze. Uh, good morning. Wait, why was she here? And why was she wearing my school's uniform? You, you, what are you doing? You're a student at the school? My voice cracked. Well, you don't have to lift it up. <laughs> Miyamura grabbed the hem of her skirt and lifted it slightly. Those were some captivating thighs. <laughs> Their uniform is pretty dope, though. It's one of the coolest uniforms I've seen in anime, and it was an absolute pleasure for me to recreate it in real life. I love that. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, well, I had difficulty coming up with a response. Just chill for a sec, okay? There wasn't anything special about her being a student here. Okay, I get it. You're a student. What are you doing up here? I rotated my head a few times to relieve my stiff neck. In addition to the cold, my body was sore because I slept in an awkward position. What? <laughs> she laughed. Thankfully, it was only a thought. What would I have done if I had awakened in that position? Alright, but you didn't answer my question. Why are you here? Miyamura flashed a huge smile. That, this was frustrating. I didn't know what was what I was frustrated about. But the moment I saw her smile, I felt the sinking feeling inside of me. Long story short, she saw me in the hallway and followed me. You could have called out to me earlier. She paused for a moment. I don't get it. Let's not give anyone the wrong idea. <laughs> that night, she dragged me around the city after her keys were stolen. We hopped between restaurants and karaoke bars until dawn. Even worse, it was all on me. I don't come to school much. I don't even know the names or faces of my own classmates. Being in the same year as others didn't mean I had to know everything about them. <laughs> so you're hopeless. <laughs> We're not comrades, you're just... I was about to say annoying when her eyes met mine. What? Ah, that. My sister is a graduate. She got this key from some oddball friends of hers. She raised her voice in admiration. <laughs> it's nowhere near that epic. My sister hadn't prepared anything to commemorate the start of my collegiate life, so she gave me this key in desperation. <laughs> I was grateful because she had given me a nice place where I could be alone. She ambled around like a bear in a cage. What a restless girl. Yeah, that would give me like the heebie-jeebies. I wouldn't want to be up there. <laughs> I noticed it's not a big of a deal when you think about it. That is correct. They would have never expected intruders like us. Hey. 
She blissfully wandered toward the edge of the, of the roof. One slip and she would have disappeared over the edge. I quickly grabbed a hold of her hand. Uh, it's dangerous, don't do that. I recalled what happened on Christmas Eve. Well, she never crossed the line, she seemed to be comfortable skirting it. I couldn't explain it very well, but it was something to that effect. <laughs> Nothing. I let go of her hand. She smiled and gently rubbed where I had grabbed her. <laughs> what now? <laughs> Shit. I dropped my guard because of my nap. She easily had enough time to flip through my notebook. What do you mean? She knew there was no way I could get out of this. Kay, along with my family, were the only ones who were supposed to know. I'm a manga artist. The genuine article. She thought I was only an aspiring amateur. I'm a paid professional, believe it or not. Yeah. She stared at me for a long moment, then she took a deep breath. Shoujo manga. <laughs> her eyes lit up. <laughs> well, I didn't expect her to be shocked. Just what was she trying to say? Can we please talk about something other than my face? Talking about my job would be better than this. <laughs> she stared at me. No man on earth would want to have an effeminate reputation. Nobody called me that. Actually, they did. <laughs> Miyamura giggled and spun around for no reason. <laughs> she cast me an upward glance. She was seriously impressed. If you have all this time to suck up to others, maybe you should spend it on something else. Well, how about giving my manga a try? There are plenty of lines like that in there for laughs. I flashed her a grin and she responded with a smile. The wind howled. Her hair and skirt billowed in the wind. Anyone who saw us would have smirked at the two idiots staring at each other. That must have been a text message. I stopped thinking and reached for my cell phone on the table. I'm not coming because of morning practice. Get up on your own. Hmm. Yes, if you skip, I'll kill you. Okay. <laughs> ah, that was one line too many. I feared for the sanity of anyone who would be unfortunate enough to marry her. Nah, not much I can do about my future uh, about any future husband. I looked down at my draft sheets. Most of them still had large areas to be fi filled. There wasn't much time until the deadline. Was I that far behind schedule? At the very least, it would be nice if I had some help. All backgrounds and shading were my responsibility because I didn't have an assistant. It would have been difficult to find one in a city like Ottawa. Even if I did, I'd have to be able to afford him. Here goes. I slapped my cheeks to invigorate myself and filled my pen with ink. Ah. Right when I was getting fired up. I picked up my cell phone for the second time. Hello? A sharp voice struck my eardrums. 
Mr. Omorao, you're not in uh, in the mob. Ditch the accent. <laughs> it was a crude, obnoxious Kansai accent at the best of times. Five more pages to ink. The man at the other end of the line was uh, Yoshihiko Omura. I never asked about his age, but he was probably in his mid-30s. He used to be the editor of a testosterone-soaked manga <laughs> monthly at some macho publishing company. Then he switched companies and somehow ended up as the editor of a shoujo manga publication. Was it really a managerial mix-up that got him there? This foul-mouthed, crude, and violent-looking man couldn't possibly get along with other shoujo manga artists. As always. Even though he didn't look the part, he was surprisingly competent. He likely had an assistant on standby, so he would send him over to Ottawa the moment I gave my approval. But I don't need one. I've never failed you, so trust me. Pickles and miso. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that doesn't sound very, very consistent. I'm living off white rice. Isn't it about time we discussed my salary? <laughs> I didn't expect a serious reply. <laughs> People like me are supposed to enter the death match against their editors? There was no way a feeble manga artist like myself could beat up a former rugby powerhouse. <laughs> the hell are you on? <laughs> this guy was hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a much nicer tone. It was what I expected from a veteran such as him. He could butter you up or hammer you down in an instant. Dumbass, I won't make the deadline if I take it easy. Look where that got you. Rather than play all meek and sensitive, I fired off a bombardment of insults. <laughs> he hung up before I could respond. His VIP treatment seemed to be the way he handled garbage. I picked up my pen. Whatever you say, I'll still do my job. Somehow, I was actually enjoying the pressure. This place was one of many boring places in the world. A boring place, one with nothing to redeem itself in my eyes. It was a place filled with excuses for those who would rather fool around all day. I never wanted to make excuses for my actions. I wanted to move forward. That was what I believed. Hello. <laughs> I was hunched over my desk during break. Kyosuke Tsutsumi called out to me. Better than fake optimism. <laughs> if you have nothing else to say, get lost. I'm not in any mood to play with you. <laughs> he laid out a bemused laugh at my attempt to drive him away. He didn't need to tell me. I knew I was dying. <laughs> as repetitive as it seemed, I would always scarcely meet the submission deadline. Then I would head straight to school without any sleep. It was a lovely seamless schedule without an idle mo moment. Hey, Kyosuke. Huh? If I died, would you cry for me? <laughs> the fatigue from the old nighter was making me ramble. <laughs> Never mind, I'm an idiot for expecting anything else. Instead of talking to this guy, I should have attempted to sleep. <laughs> How did he come up with that? I imagine the scene of Kay performing a hex over my dead body. <laughs> uh, 
I wouldn't be able to rest in peace. <laughs> ぜいたくだよ、お前は。大体想像してみろよ。俺がお前のために泣いてるところ。Yeah, not a pretty sight. だろ気をつけない、グリン。However, there was a certain fearlessness in his smile that I didn't have. From what I heard, there were more than a few girls who would babble on about his apparent charm. Despite being a shoujo manga artist, I never quite understood the tendencies of women. I ignored his tasteless joke and asked a question of my own. Do you have one? Huh? Someone who would cry for you. <laughs> so he did deceive me. When I asked him earlier if he had a girlfriend, he said, Not today. He seemed to have no shortage of women, but nobody could stand dating him for very long. I can't imagine any girl wanting to come near you. Yes, it is. How do you manage to seduce them every time? Then, how do you convince them to throw their lives away? Oh, then what is it? For you, it's an illusion. I guess he got tired of making comebacks, so he mumbled feebly. In the end, you always break up, right? <sighs> Bullseye. Life sucks, doesn't it? The atmosphere turned cold. Suddenly, our homeroom teacher entered the classroom. Good, now I can finally sleep. <laughs> Really now? Kyosuke grimaced and returned to his seat. I filled in countless surveys last year. Ottawa Collegiate was a highly regarded institution after all. I never took them seriously and now I was nearing the end of my second year here. If I wrote a half assed response, I'd be called in by the teachers. Answering it seriously would also bring the same result. If I were a teacher, I'd be furious if one of my students wrote manga artist as their career goal. <sighs> it was lunchtime. Hirono senpai. Kay approached me with a docile look on her face. What do you want? She brought a hand up to her chest. I'm listening. Not an ounce of shame. <laughs> You know I'm poor. <laughs> Is that how you ask for a favor? Did she think I was stupid? She knew I was a newcomer and didn't make much. Was she trying to rub salt on my wounds? Can't you borrow from your friends? Uh, Jude, no, 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 no. It's fine. We're, we're fine without all of that. <sighs> she had come directly to me instead. Oh, so it's fine to go after me. <laughs> Kay nodded and held out her hand. She depended on me so much, I guess I should have been flattered. I slowly took out my wallet and gave her a banknote. Don't forget the interest. Dumbass, I was kidding. Then I remembered. Someone from somewhere still owed me something. I hadn't pressed the issue because that person was a girl. Kay's cheeks reddened. On top of that, she was fidgeting. She was starting to act weird lately. <laughs> he, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. I couldn't begin to imagine why. Exhibit A. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kay's eyebrows lowered. All the more reason. If I had to go, I'd rather it be just you and me. Her eyes beamed and her already inflamed cheeks burned the shade brighter. But... Not only have you been excessively violent, you talk too much. I would have appreciated it if she hadn't brought up such, touch, such a touch, touchy issue. Uh. 
<laughs> Kay's eyes focused in a different direction. I turned and followed her gaze. A girl was walking down the corridor. She had a poker face and was walking um, neither quickly nor slowly. Huh? Miyamura? She glanced in my direction and continued on without saying a word. What's with her? She had her bag with her and appeared to be heading somewhere, even though school was only halfway over. Continue talking or follow her. Ooh, we get the first choice. Let me make a save here. Is that how you do it? Uh, I don't want to add a comment, just save. How do I save? <laughs> this is weird. Ah, is that it? Does it now appear there? Okay, okay, okay. Good. Right, so the choice here would be to follow her. Miyamura! I caught up to the leisurely paced Miyamura and called out to her. Uh -huh. Are you taking off already? Uh -huh. She seemed to be different than usual. It was as if something had tranquilized her. Nah, nothing important. It's only lunchtime. Uh, but it's only lunchtime. You okay? Maybe she was feeling the effects of uh, post-concussive syndrome from the Christmas Eve crash. If you say so. She didn't look too healthy, but I wasn't about to question her self-diagnosis. Besides, I didn't see a point in pressing the matter. Uh, yeah. She stared at my side. <laughs> there stood Kay, who had followed me for some reason. <laughs> Kay refuted Miyamura's assumption before I had the chance to open my mouth. <laughs> oh, she definitely was. And her face was on fire, too. She left with a light wave of her hand. You two sure get along well. Kay glared at me. We met once or twice. It's not like we chat all the time. You know her too? Kay responded as though I had insulted her intelligence. What's she guilty of? I see. Miyamura's looks were out of this world. One day, I would have, uh, I would have her sit down for a sketch. Shoujo manga featured beautiful girls, a description that fit her perfectly. I knew there was something else. She seemed to be someone who would have a skeleton in her closet. <laughs> she did tell me that she was a shameless uh, uh, school skipping scamp. So she's like that to everyone. Something must be seriously wrong with her. I was want to talk. Oh boy. I didn't like that tone of voice. I wondered if I did anything wrong. I already told you, we spoke a few times, but we're not friends or anything. Kay's voice was filled with murderous intent. Don't go spouting random nonsense now. Moro ni Hirono-senpai no type jamai no. 
It was true that many of the female characters in my manga fit that description. However, Kay was wrong on two accounts. First, I didn't draw mysterious girls because I liked them, I simply happened to choose them as subjects. Second, Miyamura's image was something other than mysterious. Don't be stupid, I like older women. <laughs> My ankle almost shattered after being on the receiving end of Kay's powerful kick. Can't you act a little, a little more feminine? <laughs> Kay had a point. With that low kick of hers, she uh, should take up karate instead of <laughs> basketball. Demo. <laughs> Should have been a shonen manga artist instead. <laughs> I don't know if that would have suited him even, even more. <laughs> I think it's fine. It's it's. I think uh, especially for someone this young, uh, it's all right or like it's it's possible. It's uh, acceptable um, to write about something, but when you are the one involved in those kinds of situations, to not really be aware of it. He still has a little bit of growing up to do, I guess. How so? Also, the way it sounds like the, the his daily schedule is and um, his attention is mostly focused on his work and all of his energy goes there and he goes to school like after particularly now as well uh, after all-nighters and so on so I, I kind of would assume that in this situation everything that he has to give is put into the work and then when he is in the actual world interacting with actual people he's not really super present because he's like tired and you know his mind is not really there so it would make sense to be a little bit more on the dance side. Um, yeah, it's all right. Right. I was probably the only student in the school who was in danger of failing due to lousy attendance. There it is. <laughs> Does it really seem that way? I was a bit surprised. Maybe she's got the same excuse. Why not? She's my type after all. <laughs> my side was ready to implode at that instant. No more violence! Don't treat me like I'm a dog. <laughs> Whoa, a dog chained to someone's porch suddenly barked at me. It couldn't bite me through the fence, but I distanced myself from it nonetheless. Such a violent mutt should be chained to behind the building. It was probably there to scare off solicitors, but the owner should have been considerate of the general public. Hey, I'm a delicate guy, huh? <laughs> a girl stood behind me, as if it were completely natural for her to be there. Ah, Miss Amamiya. Dama. Um, hi. I had to greet her somehow. Inhumane. Okay, <laughs> she was right. Not the part about the demon, but it wasn't like me to remember the name of a girl I had only met once before. Maybe she just had a name that stood out. So... What are you doing here? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Miss Amamiya ducked her head and stuck out her tongue. You did that on purpose, didn't you? This woman was screwing with me again. <laughs> Listen, you, if that's how you want to talk, I'm leaving. I 
I don't like being on first name basis with someone I've only met twice. It's not like we're close or anything. <laughs> Aren't you younger than me? How old are you? Hirono-san,Hirono-san,いいことを教えてあげますよ。これ、世の中を生き延びるための鉄則です。The <laughs> survival of the human race. <laughs> oh my god. Is it actually a life or, or death matter? 別に生死に関わるようなことじゃないんだから。そう思うんだけどな、私は手に持った進路死亡アンケートに視線を落とす。Well, it's not that complicated of a form. You just have to give like a general idea of what you are you are thinking. And see, they accept stuff like higher education or finding employment. なんとなくこの手の調査票は配られたけど、まともに書いた試しがない。書くことがないとも言う。だって、やりたいことなんてないしさ。つぶやいても、答えてくれる人はいない。答えが欲しいわけじゃない。そして答えを探そうとも思っていないのです。だからこんなものはこうしてしまいましょう。愚者愚者と手の中でアンケートの紙を乱暴に丸める。はあ、せいせいした。後で先生に何を言われるかはとりあえず考えないことにしよう。さ
With her appearance, how could she possibly be older than me? My suspicions grew after hearing her response. You work. I was honestly surprised. I thought you were a student. She looked over my uniform. It's a long story, but there are many students who have jobs. So you actually work. Your appearance doesn't give me the slightest clue as to what you do for a living. Actually, it makes me even more confused. Her <laughs> face. <laughs> she seemed to be disappointed at my response. So, what do you do? I don't understand. Serve. Messenger. A young woman. Those keywords gave me the impression of... Are you a maid? <laughs> <laughs> You're really a maid? Could it be that you also perform nightly services? What? <laughs> uh, so you're ready to go whenever? And what do your employers have you do? Miss Amamiya gave an elegant bow. So it actually exists. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. But I didn't go out and collect maid paraphernalia. <laughs> My head was ready to explode after going through a gamut of indecent thoughts. Huh. That would be a problem for me. If I could afford to take a break, I'd have done so a long time ago. That's really none of your business. <laughs> she giggled. Ah, all right. We've been at it for a little bit. I think it's a it's a good moment to save here. And uh, let's see. Stream one end. Aha. We're back to this uh, kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's leave it there for now. Um, doo -doo -doo, there we go. I'm just a little bit tired, and uh, yeah. the day has taken a lot out of me at work, and so I would like to just uh, go to bed soon but i am excited to have started this this makes me very very happy to share it with uh, with you all uh thank you so much for dropping by the stream um we will keep going with this for the foreseeable future you know two days a week as usual uh yeah thank you so much for being there beatrice i hope things went uh, went well and they will continue to go well for you uh in you know within the limits possible um given the reality that we are all transitioning. Um, but yeah, it's all right. Uh, what else? Is there anything else to say? No, not really. My brain is slowly mm, engaging shutdown mode. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different. The dynamic is different, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm also quite intrigued by the fact that they have like tiny little animations like ju just on their eyes and uh, their mouths when they speak. Uh, it's not much, but it adds like a dynamic layer that I didn't really experience in the previous novels that I've done. So I, I enjoy that very, very much. All right. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's that's my go to bed go to bed sign. 
So I wish you all a nice weekend and I will see you again Tuesday with uh, more of uh, FF. Yeah. Take care and see you then. Love you. Bye bye.